In a school or work environment, what can we do to guide ourselves from having our hearts broken or our feelings hurt? You're gonna have your heart broken and you're gonna have your feelings hurt. Just, just be prepared for that. And you know, when I was growing up as a child, my mom always told me, Renee, everybody's not gonna like you. And so she was really preparing me for the world. And it has nothing to do with you necessarily being a bad person. It has nothing to do necessarily with you um, not being a what people think you should be. It just sometimes is the way, that's the way some people are. Some people just don't like you because of what you believe or they don't like you because you have something that they don't have or they're envious of you or they're jealous of you. There are many reasons why people won't like you. It's not necessarily always one thing. but. If you believe that everybody needs to like you because you're Christian, then you're not gonna make it, sorry. When you're confronted with those types of situations where you're put in a position that you have to choose in sides, you have to take sides. Am I on the side of traditional marriage or am I on the, um, I on the side of what society wants to say marriage is supposed to be? Which side are you gonna take, you know? And some people who are Christians are afraid to say, well, you know what, I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to take the side that says marriage is between a man and a woman. And you know what, God loves everybody, but God has a certain standard that we all have to live by, whether we're Christians or not. That is just the standard that God has set. And to expect me as a Christian to go with your standard is not fair. Now I can understand where some people may feel they may lose their jobs. It's been happening already. There are so many Christians who have lost their jobs because they have a worldview that is based on the Word of God. Because they choose to side with the truth which comes from the Word of God because they choose to witness to someone at work and say, you know what, Jesus loves you. And you can come as you are. All you have to do is confess your sins to God and surrender your heart and life to Christ. And Jesus will forgive you, he loves you. You know, I'm not better than you. As a Christian, we're not better, as Christians, sorry, we're not better than people because we're Christian. Nobody's better than anybody. We're all sinners saved by grace, and we're saved by grace through faith. But you cannot be saved unless you understand that you have to be saved from something. So the problem with a lot of people now in the world is that they feel that when Christians choose to side with the Word of God and say, you know what, I'm going to go with God's version of marriage instead of yours. Um, they, they tend to take it personally. And then there are all the verbal attacks and there's all the name calling and you're going to be called all sorts of stuff. You're going to be called um, homophobic. You're going to be called intolerant. You're going to be called a Bible thumper, a hater, all sorts of stuff. But it's okay. Jesus said you're supposed to expect that. He said, they hated me, so they're going to hate you. And the only reason why you're going to be hated is because you're, you're salt and you're light. You are the light of the world. That's what the Word of God says. We're the light of the world. So a city set up on a hill cannot be hidden. We're not supposed to hide what we believe in. We're not supposed to hide God's view of what anything should be. Whether it's marriage, whether it's having babies, whether it's raising children, it doesn't matter what the topic is. And the two most controversial topics that we're dealing right now with right now in our world and society is marriage and the whole issue of abortion, which is really the termination of an otherwise normal healthy pregnancy. Those are the two very controversial topics right now. Christians are being vilified and demonized for believing that you know the unborn child has a right to life and actually we've been dealing with these topics one specific one for quite a while now 
The whole issue of abortion. Does, does the unborn child have a right to live? Whose choice is it? Is it the choice of the mother or is does the government have a right to say whether it's wrong or right for that child to, to live? Is the child a human being even though it's in the womb and it's not literally out in the world yet, it's not born yet? Is that a human life? When does life begin? Th those were issues that were wrong for years. Um, since I was in school, I mean, you know, in debates and in discussions with my classmates on this issue. And, there, you know, I have my view, my view is based on the Word of God, that the child has the right to live because God says so. Because life begins at conception. And life is sacred. So, of course, what else will I say? And, of course, I had classmates that didn't hold the same view I held. And I had to deal with being called the saint or the holy one or whatever. But, you know, I didn't take it personally. At the end of the day, my classmates, we had a common respect for each other. They knew I was a Christian. It wasn't something I wanted. I was hiding. They knew who I was. They knew what I believed in. I was called goody two-shoes. That's fine. You know what? I knew who I was in Christ. Since I was a child, my mother and my parents trained me really to be that way. So I, I grew up in a Christian home where I knew who I am in Christ since then. I know it now. And you really have to know who you are in Christ so you won't feel the need to fit in. You're not supposed to fit in. You're supposed to stand out. Stop trying to fit in. That's a problem with a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians are trying to fit in with the culture, fit in with society and be relevant. Jesus didn't fit in, did he? That's why he was crucified. He did not fit into anything. He did not make himself subject to the opinions of people. If he did, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to accomplish what he accomplished by fulfilling the purpose of God for his life and the purpose for which he came, which was really to come and save the world. Okay? So, your, your feelings are going to be hurt. You can't prevent your feelings from being hurt in life, period, whether you're a Christian or not. But if, if your question, and this question I know is coming from this person, but maybe other people have questions about this same issue. The noise you're hearing is the AC, so just bear with me right now. So when it comes to dealing with... Um, Okay, the, the next part of the question is, okay, you're supposed to love. Of course you're supposed to love. You don't hate people just because they don't like the fact that you're a Christian. The Word of God says that we must uh, love our neighbors as ourselves. And your neighbors are not necessarily going to be on the same page with you. You may have neighbors who are, are <laughs> a different religion or a different sexual orientation or a different worldview, but you're to love them. And, you know, this, we must, as believers, we must stop seeing this as a war of us against them. It's not. Don't fight the people. We're supposed to love people. Jesus loved people, even the people who hated him. Even the people who hated what he stood for and what he believed in. Jesus loved everybody. No, he doesn't love everything that people do. That's why he came to the world to save the world from sin. And we just have to accept the fact that certain ways of thinking and acting and living is sinful. And that's just the nature of, of, of us as human beings. Our nature is the sinful nature. The only way that we cannot have a sinful nature is when we decide to sur surrender our lives to Christ and say, you know what, Father, I'm not perfect. But I choose to live a life that pleases you. And you're going to make mistakes. You know, you're going to make mistakes. But when you're repentant and you're saying, God, forgive me. I was wrong. Help me to be a better person. That's where it all starts. You cannot love your neighbor as yourself unless you first love yourself. Unless you first forgive yourself. Loving and forgiveness go hand in hand. So even if, some, even if your neighbor... And, and your neighbor, of course, doesn't just mean the person who lives next door. Your neighbor means whoever you're around, whoever you inter interact with, especially on a regular basis. 
we're supposed to love people in spite of and despite of their flaws. You know, I have I have a, a kind of a little phrase that I often tell myself when I think of having to walk this Christian walk and, and really do it God's way. God isn't asking us to be perfect necessarily. He's asking us to be willing to allow Him to perfect us by the power of His Spirit. We cannot live the Christian life without the help of God, without the help of the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. It's impossible to live a Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit. And it's impossible to live the Christian life and, and not have enemies. You're going to have enemies. There are people who are, gonna, who are not going to like you just because you are a Christian. And you mustn't take it personally. Just realize, recognize that sometimes it's a spiritual issue and many times it's a spiritual issue. Maybe the spirit that is on them is opposed to the spirit that's in you. Remember, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. There are sometimes people just don't like you because the spirit in them, it may be a demonic spirit, it may just be an anti-Christ spirit, it may just be a spirit that resists the word of God. It doesn't like the Jesus in you. Okay? So don't take it personally like, oh, she always has something negative to say about me. She's always gossiping and backbiting. That's just a part of life. You just, you just have to deal with it. You just gotta, as they say, roll with the punches, go with, you know. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't let it bother you. You really have to come to a place where you live above it. And um, as I was saying earlier, I went off topic a bit. To really be beautiful and to be perfect is to love all and to forgive all. That's true beauty. That's a life of beauty. That's a life of grace. Love all and forgive all. Oh, how are we going to possibly do that without the help of God, without the help of the Holy Spirit? It's not possible. So really, it's, as believers, we have to make a conscious decision that, you know what, Heavenly Father, I cannot do this on my own. I have to live among these people that don't like me because I believe your word, because I stand upon your promises. But you know what, I'm going to choose to live for God anyway. Christianity is not for wimps. <laughs> Christianity is not for people who are always offended by everything and wear the emotions on their sleeves. Christianity is for people who are bold, who are courageous. And, and God said that to Joshua, be strong, be bold, be courageous, for the Lord your God is with you. And this is what I'm going to say to the person who asked this question and to every person who's viewing this video and to every Christian person out there, whether you're a child, whether you are an adult or a young adult, teenager, whether you're in college or in high school, and you're in, or you're working at a place where people don't like you because you're Christian, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what people think about you. Don't be afraid of what they're going to say about you just because you choose to live your life according to the standards of the Word of God. Okay? Expect to have some sort of resistance. It's like you got to toughen up yourself. It's, it's like going into a fight. If you're a boxer and you're going into a fight and you want to win that fight, you cannot expect that you're going to be throwing punches and punches are not going to come at you. You expect to get hit. <laughs> you don't want to get knocked out. But you, you, you know you're going to get hit. You know you're going to have to take some punches, but you just roll with it. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to prevail because you have in your corner, your helper, your coach, your trainer is the Holy Spirit. And he's going to train you and teach you how to deal with people, how to deal with difficult situations. But expect opposition. Expect people to resist uh, what you are going to have to say or what you think because that's just the way it is. That's the time we're living in. Your job is not to persuade people onto taking sides with you. Your job is simply to be salt and light. And you do that by showing the love of God. You do that by, by you know, not necessarily turning the other cheek and saying, hey, slap me here. You know, we, a lot of people use that scripture out of context, you know, turn the other cheek slap me here. No, that's not what it means. <laughs> it means, you know, just having the ability to be the better person. 
having the ability to be the person that is going to say, you know what, even though you choose to treat me this way, even though you choose to hate on me just because I believe in God, just because I believe in, believe in godly marriage, just because I believe that a, an unborn child has the right to live, even though you choose to treat me like this, guess what? God bless you. I forgive you for the way you're treating me, and I choose to love you with the love of God. Anyway, I'm not going to be faced by that. I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm going to be above that. I'm going to be above that because I choose to have the mind of Christ. And remember, as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers. And understand what you're dealing with. When you're dealing with the spirit of the age, when you're dealing with the spirit of Antichrist, when you're dealing with people who have a Jezebel spirit operating through them, which is a spirit of control and domination and fierceness, and the spirit that just wants to uh, silence the voice of the church, silence the voice of God, okay? When you're dealing with people who have that spirit in them, or if you're dealing with, with, with an entity or, or an organization that is operating under those types of spirits, don't deal with them as, don't deal with it as, oh, I'm fighting a person. Understand that you're dealing with spiritual warfare. And if we're seated, since we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, we're above that. We're not subject to those spirits. We're not going to let those spirits influence us. It's all over the television. You know, a lot of, <laughs> it's like a bombardment. You're seeing images and imagery and hearing things that totally go against the Word of God. And it's becoming the norm. Because the more you see something, the more you tend to think that it's, this is normal. Like, you, you know, that's the whole uh, power of advertising. If you see an advertisement more than seven times, you begin to believe that that brand must be a great brand. And it's credible because you keep seeing it all the time. That's why the Word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You, Anything you put in front of your eyes constantly, anything you put in, in your ears constantly, you're, you're eventually going to believe. But don't believe the lies that you're hearing on the television or that you're reading or that you're, you're listening to. Don't believe the lies of the devil. Don't believe the lies of deception. Don't believe the lies that, you know, equality is based on going against the word of God. God has made every one of us equal. There is no person that is better than another person based on their race, their gender, their orientation, or their preferences. God has made each and every one of us equal. This whole issue of equality and inequality is really something that the enemy has used to divide people. Whether it's inequality in terms of race, whether it's inequality, inequality in terms of sexual orientation, or social status, whatever it is, the devil is always trying to divide us as humans. So we can just hate one another, tear each other down, and then he tries to get us to, to fight each other, you know? That's, and that's not of God. We know that's not of God. But at the end of the day, we have to choose to, to side with the Word of God. We have to choose to stand on the Word of God and on the promises of God. And in the process of doing that, you're going to butt heads with people. You're going to rub people the wrong way. And that's fine. You have to choose to, you know what, I am going to stand up for what I believe in. Because just like I have a right to believe in what I believe in, you have a right to believe in what you believe in. I'm not going to be upset with you because you believe that you have a right to kill the unborn baby in the womb and call it women's rights. I'm not, that doesn't bother me. It's not, it's not upsetting to me to the point that I want to tear you down. I'm just going to tell you, I don't have the same view as you. I hold a different view. I believe that the baby has a right to live. I believe that that child's life is sacred and precious and special to God and that God loves you. And he has a purpose for you. And he has a purpose for that child. Because, you know, he said to Jeremiah, when I formed you, and before, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So before the baby's even born, God knows that child. Before the baby's even formed in the womb of the mother, God knows that child as a person. Okay? To God, that's a person. 
And that's what I believe. And I have a right to believe that. Just as much as you have a right to believe the opposite of that. You know what I'm saying? And, and that goes for everything. Even with the whole issue of the, the marriage debate. There's nothing to debate really. God says what he says. And that's what it is. And you know what? Marriage is not an institution that was created by man. You know, so now there's this whole issue of, of now laws being passed all over the world where they're saying this is what marriage is supposed to be according to the law. We're going to redefine marriage and we're going to say this is what it's supposed to be. And we see this happening all over the world. And there's so many Christians now that are like, oh my God. I can't believe these people are doing this. I can't believe they want to change what God says is supposed to be this way. They want it to be the other way. You know, Jesus said, in the end, perilous times will come. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. So even if people are clamoring for rights, that may not go in alignment with the Word of God, even though laws may be passed that totally pervert the, the, the will of God concerning a certain issue. Roe versus Wade goes against what God says about the life of the unborn child. There are referendums and laws being passed all over the world in various countries where they want to redefine marriage. You know what? I don't even know why Christians get all upset about it and all worried about it because guess what? Not because somebody passes a law that makes it right or wrong. Because God's way of doing things is so far above ours. God's thoughts are higher than ours. God's ways are higher than ours. So they're passing laws. And so some Christians are feeling like, what are we going to do? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to continue to be salt and light. You're supposed to continue to promote good. That's your job. That's what you do. And if in the process of doing that, you rub people the wrong way, fine. Keep rolling with it. God is with you. You know what the Word of God says? If God be for you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter which law is passed. At the end of the day, only God's word will stand. Only God's word will remain. And that's what we should be focused on. So people can pass a law, but that doesn't make it right. Okay? Because at the end of the day, God says, this is what I created this institution to be. Marriage is really more spiritual than anything else. People just tend to look at marriage as always oh, a dress, and you wear a nice white wedding gown, and you're spouse, your husband, if you're, if you're a woman, you wear the gum, and the man, he wears his tuxedo, and you walk down the aisle, and you say, you, and you kiss, and you, they pronounce you man and wife, you may kiss the bride, and mwah, mwah, and you know, it's the, the nice fancy cake, and the reception, and marriage is so much more than that. <laughs> That's the wedding. People make the marriage out of the wedding. So you have a right to do that. You have a right by law to do that, to exchange vows, to wear the ring on, on the finger that shows that you're married, right? But does that make it right and pleasing in the eyes of God? Does, does God endorse it? Okay. Does God endorse it? What does God say about it? Because at the end of the day, you have to do it before God. You have to answer to God. What does God think about this? It, it, this is not about love, and this is not about equality, and this is not about who's right and who's wrong. Nobody's right, and nobody's wrong. All we're supposed to do is focus on, what does God have to say about this? What is God's mind concerning this matter? And that's all that matters, really. At the end of the day, everybody has to stand before God. All that really matters is what God thinks. All that really matters is what God's word says. So even if somebody passes a law that goes against what you believe as a Christian because it goes against the Bible, it goes against what the word of God says, you know what? They can pass all the laws they want. It does not change 
the word of God. That's the that's what we live by. That's what we go by. That's our standard. That's our guide. That's our manual. That's what's important. It's important for us to remain faithful, rooted, and grounded in the word of God. Okay? People will do what they know. If people don't know better, you can't expect them to do better. And you know, a lot of Christians are getting very, uh, I guess, they feel threatened, <laughs> and rightfully so, because now we're going to have to deal with all sorts of issues. We're going to have to deal with, uh, and actually these issues are issues that have already been uh, coming up before some of these laws were passed. They